Okay, nothing to see here. Simple little box, as you can see in the tree. It's all I have. All you gotta do is make it look like this. See my fillets? Okay, that's all we gotta do. I'll hide my measurements. And I always recommend starting with my variable fillets first. So when you go to fillets, on V5, there was another feature called variable fillets. If you click on fillets, a lot of you probably haven't been paying attention to this box up here. You've got create variable fillets and the default constant fillet. Well, if I want a fillet to vary, you just click on this icon. And I'll pick this object here on the top, this edge. And that, I'm going to double click and change to one. So it's one inch on one side. Uh, maybe that's, yeah, I think that's right. So I click on this edge over here. And then I double click on the back one and change it to a quarter. Preview that. Select OK. And that's how I got that edge fillet in there, just like that. Now, if I go to fill it and grab this face and hit preview, select OK. All right, see how quickly I got that fillet on there? Problem is, unfortunately, on that side, they didn't make it easy for me. They didn't fill it that bottom edge. So, I'm going to come back over here. Let's delete this fillet out. I have to go edge fillet and grab, make sure nothing's active. Grab the edge fillet. I'm going to grab the, this edge right here. And if I hit preview, see how it wraps all the way around, but it stops there and it stops there. And the reason why is because my propagation mode is set to tangent. If I were to say minimal and hit preview, then it only fill it that line that I chose. If I choose tangent and hit preview, it says, is this line tangent to this curve? Yes, then I'll continue on. Is this curve tangent to this vertical line? Yes, I'll continue on. Is this vertical line tangent to this horizontal line? No, it is not tangent, so it stops right there. Um, I can stop it at certain intersections. I'm just going to cover tangency and minimal for right now. I'll select OK. I know on the demo I didn't do this, but or the part I gave you. I want you to have this one here. I just realized I forgot it as I'm doing this. To do minimal on that side. So that we can have a minimal on one side. Tangency on this side variable fillets over here. I'll go ahead and shell this. Sixteenth of an inch. And it doesn't like it. And the reason why it doesn't like it is because this minimal fillet, it doesn't know what to do with it. Okay, so we can't have that fill it on there to do the next trick I'm going to do, which is I will just trust that you did that in your exercise so you could practice minimal versus um, the minimal versus the uh, tangent. So if you look at my tree, the first fillet is a variable radius. The second fillet was the one eight or one quarter of an inch fillet, and then I did the shell at a six. Did I not do sixteenth of an inch? One sixteenth of an inch. What? I mistyped that. One sixteenth of an inch, and I can continue to play now. That's why you want to expand your tree so you can always see what the heck you're doing. Make sure you have everything right. Make sure your tree looks correct. 
And uh, that's all we have to do for this part. Okay. So make your picture of this part with the tree expanded. And then you're going to do one more thing. I'm going to exit this and go back to my ISO view. Uh, one of these days I'll learn to put my action pad up there. Okay, so in my ISO view, I have this and I'm showing a variable radius. If I, uh, not variable radius. I'm showing a cubic radius. If I change that to linear, what you're going to have is, oops, what you're going to have is a straight edge. I'll preview that, select OK. See how this line transitions there? And this one transitions there. Okay, so in your Word doc, you're going to explain how you got your fillet to vary. And the answer is you either use linear or cubic. So if I double click this and switch this to cubic and hit OK, instead of going to straight transition, it comes out from where it's at, tangent, and then smoothly transitions up and then blends into this radius tangent. Not this radius this way, but in this direction. It's If it were to continue, another curve continuing this way, it would be tangent to this surface, at those two surfaces. So that's your difference between your cubic and your linear. All right, have fun with that exercise, and make your snapshots, and we'll move on to uh, part number five.